Good afternoon. I'm Dave Blazer. I'm with the Maryland Port Administration. Um, I have a couple slides here. I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of a local perspective uh, related to some of the pollution issues that we deal with as a Port of Baltimore. Um, I'll briefly talk a little bit about the port, some of our priorities, some of our issues that we're dealing with. Um, and basically our approach is to <clears throat> address a lot of the issues that come up that we've talked about already today. <clears throat> the, uh, a lot of the policies like climate change, marine spatial planning, uh, TMDLs, uh, water quality, habitat restoration, those are a lot of the issues that uh, we confront and we uh, are kind of I guess trying to implement a lot of the things that we've talked about on a policy-wide uh, basis. Our mission statement, we're a port. Our goal is to uh, foster waterborne commerce in and out of the, the Port of Baltimore for an economic benefit. Uh, we've been around longer than the city of Baltimore has been incorporated. We're over 300 years old as a Port of Baltimore. The city of Baltimore is only about 220 years old, so we kind of call ourselves the port that created a city. Um, we have advantages uh, as a port. We're a deep water port. You heard a little bit about the Panama Canal expansion. We're one of only two ports on the East Coast that has a 50-foot depth channel right now. So we are equipped and ready to handle the uh, post-Panamax vessels that will be coming into, onto the East Coast. Um, down on the bottom, you can see our environmental commitment. We learned a long time ago um, that we've got to address the environmental issues. If you look at our picture here on the top, um, we don't have a forest buffer. We've got a lot of concrete and asphalt. In fact, in our buffers, we've got cranes. We don't have trees. So environmentally we have some challenges what are we going to do how are we going to handle those things we you know stormwater runoff is actually one of our our biggest issues um, but we do have an environmental commitment to go through and part of that actually established back in the the 70s and 80s because we had a lot of uh, legacy contaminants a legacy pollution um, with the uh, focus on the chesapeake bay restoration the port had to become a player in that and had to be involved. Uh, the Port of Baltimore, uh, we're on the Patapsco River, 135 miles upstream in the Chesapeake Bay. We're a mixture of private and public terminals. Uh, the, the MPA, the Maryland Port Administration, has some, um, but a lot of them are private uh, terminals. We run uh, forest products. We're the number one port um, in the United States. They handle sugar. We have Domino Sugar. If you've ever been to downtown Baltimore, you've probably seen the Domino Sugar plant. Uh, salt and fertilizers, even though we ran out of salt about two weeks ago. Um, autos, we are the number one auto port, import and export in the U.S. We overtook New York about two or three years ago. Uh, coal and iron ore, we had Bethlehem Steel on Sparrows Point, uh, which has since been sold and has been closed coal and, and iron, or iron ore were, were kind of dropping. Coal were still a big producer, uh, exporter of that. Farming equipment, containers, uh, if you have a shirt on that has a collar, it probably came through a port. There is not a U.S. manufacturer that produces shirts with collars. They're all made overseas and they're all shipped here. Most of your TVs, most of your uh, electronics have come through a container to get to the uh, to the U.S. So we have an economic stimulus. You know, we do a lot of things. Baltimore is, I think, the ninth largest port as far as tons of um, uh, material coming through, and we're 11th in value, uh, so out of 384 ports in the U.S. Uh, I'm in charge of the dredging program, me and my team, and uh, we have about over 5 million uh, cubic yard, million cubic yards of uh, dredge material that we have to take care of. Uh, we do the lower bay channels down in Virginia, uh, the upper bay channels, uh, which includes the C&D canal. We have two access points. Uh, the 50-foot channel is from Virginia up to the Port of Baltimore. The C&D channel, we do a lot of uh, uh, Canadian local port 
uh, transport through the C&D Canal to get to Baltimore. And Baltimore is uh, up in the upper circle uh, in the Tapsco River. So we have a lot of dredge material. Guess what? People don't like dredge material in their backyard, especially when it's in the Patapsco River uh, that I just showed you where you've had Allied Signal, Chromium Plant, Bethlehem Steel, uh, a lot of other industries that have been there that have discharged effluent for many, many years. And now it's in a lot of the sediments and in the water quality. Now, some of those industries, the two that I mentioned, have closed down, uh, but we've still got to deal with those particular issues, and it's in the dredge material, so what are we going to do with it? Um, so a couple things. Uh, the gentleman from the Corps of Engineers this morning talked a little bit about uh, beneficial reuse. Uh, the Maryland State Legislature uh, recommended that we use dredge material positively. Since we couldn't put it in people's backyards, what are we going to do with it? Where are we going to put it? Well, uh, Poplar Island uh, eroded away. It used to be a thousand acres and it had eroded away over time down to about three acres. So we worked with the Corps of Engineers and a lot of collaboration that you hear a lot about and we rebuilt Poplar Island back to as close to the footprint as we could with good clean dredge material um, out of the bay. So the this half of Poplar Island is going to be all uplands. The back half is all going to be wetlands that are there. One of the issues that we have with, you know, we've tried to address climate change and sea level rise. Uh, one of the issues that we're confronted with where you're creating wetlands and sea level rise where the error of margin or the margin of error in creating a wetlands is just a couple inches. Well, how do you plan for a sea level rise over 20 to 50 year time frame? You want those uh, wetlands to be functional now or soon, but then you've got to accommodate sea level rise. So we don't have an answer for that yet. We're doing the best we can. These two sites, Masonville and Cox Creek, these are in Baltimore Harbor. Um, and these are the ones that receive our contaminated material. Um, they are contained. We have built berms all the way around them with slurry walls and liners so that there is no leaching that gets out of those sites. Um, but even still, we have a lot of uh, cleanup to do, and we're trying to find waterfront property in Baltimore. Guess what? We're not getting the best properties. We're getting old in industrial properties. Um, this was a copper refinery at Masonville, or I'm sorry, uh, and Cox Creek was a, the copper refinery. At Masonville, it was a boat building um, location. So uh, we've had to go in and clean those sites up uh, in order to use them. We talk about collaboration. We've tried to do a lot of environmental education. We do a lot of uh, planning. We've done a lot of remediation to address a lot of those pollution problems. Um, some of our environmental initiatives, again, water quality, uh, air quality, and energy efficiency. These are the things that we're trying to do to address stormwater management, the TMDLs that we have, uh, diesel emissions, those are significant things with sulfur um, and energy efficiency. We're trying to reduce our carbon footprint. We're trying to redu reduce our uh, uh, issues related to a lot of environmental things. Real quick, some stormwater BMPs. We want to do the best we can with stormwater. Uh, so we've tried to, a lot of a variety of different things. I showed you our buffer. We've got thousands of acres of concrete and asphalt. So how, do we, how can we address those things? We've put in filters in a lot of the stormwater areas. We've, we're experimenting with floating wetlands and algal turf scrubbers just to try and uh, be creative and come up with some different ideas. Uh, here's a picture of the floating wetlands. We're trying bioretention areas. Uh, we have a, a, a significant maintenance program where you, we have to go in and clean our storm drains with a, a lot of the filters that we put in. Uh, trying to do the best we can on our terminals. The other project uh, is air quality issues with uh, clean diesel programs. We have diesel trucks, we have diesel trains, we have diesel uh, cargo handling equipment. With the advancements in uh, diesel emissions, we are uh, helping to fund a lot of those retrofits where we can replace or improve those so that we get better air quality 
uh, of uh, uh, SOX and NOx and, and uh, hydrocarbons and so forth. So we're, we're looking at reductions there. Energy efficiency, we're putting, uh, we've got warehouses on our terminals. Can we put solar panels on those issues, uh, on those uh, buildings? Um, improving our lighting, trying to take the steps where we can become more energy efficient. It not only makes sense environmentally, but it also is a cost savings because it's cheaper. So over the long run, we're not going anywhere. We're the state government. We're the port. We're going to be here at least another 300 years, I anticipate. Uh, so it makes sense for us to make these investments. Some of our challenges of uh, moving forward, trying to maintain a cost-effective, environmentally sensitive, and community-supported dredging program is always a challenge. I was talking to Tony McDonald before, and we were talking about, well, geez, we had these issues 20, 30 years ago. They never go away. We've got to keep working at it. We've got to keep addressing those. Um, so you can see the list here. Uh, trying to find upland placement sites is a challenge. People don't want it in their backyard. So we can come in. We can help clean up these old industrial sites, but we need to be able to use them uh, in it for a containment area as we go through. Innovative reuse, beneficial reuse. How can we use some of that material? Uh, talk about water quality, air quality. How can we restore wetlands uh, or other habitats uh, in an urban environment, in a port environment? And marine spatial planning that we talked a little bit about is one of the issues that we're kind of tracking. So these are all issues. I've talked a little bit about some of the ways that we're trying to address those. Um, so I, I appreciate it and enjoy your collared shirts. <laughs> and uh, I'll be around for questions. Thank you all very much.